to welcome one, welcome all to our meeting. Uh, I'm going to do a reading on uh, our special session that we're going to be having here this evening. Honorable members of City Council, in accordance with the Virginia Beach City Code 2-21, Virginia Beach Code-15-2-1413, uh, and the City's Continuity of Government Ordinance adopted on uh, September 15th of 2020, and Chapter 1289 of the 2020 Acts of Assembly as amended and by the authority of me vested as mayor of the city of Virginia Beach, I hereby call a special meeting by electronic communication means of the Virginia Beach City Council on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, and that was uh, commencing at 3 o'clock. This special meeting by electronic communication means will be held virtually with the council members participating via video and slash audio conference. The purpose of the special meeting is to allow city council to hold regularly scheduled meetings regarding the items that are listed in the published agenda. If you want, wish to make comments during the meeting, please follow the two-step process provided below. Register for WebEx, at um, uh, httbsvbgovwebx.com and two, to register with the city clerk's office by calling 757-285-4303 or via email at abarns at vbgov.com prior to five o'clock on January 5th of 2021. Uh, the city council meeting will be streamed live on vbgov.com and Facebook Live and will be recorded for rebroadcast on channel, uh, cable TV. Okay, that is by Bobby Dyer. And uh, right now I'd like to turn the meeting over to our great Chief Deputy Clerk, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Ch uh, Chilius, who will provide meeting instructions for and structure going forward. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. This is Chief Deputy City Clerk Terry Chelius. Today's meeting is being conducted electronically and is allowed as described by Mayor Dyer during his reading of the special call for a special session. Also, please note the meeting is being recorded. To ensure this live event is successful, please note the following meeting instructions must be followed. Speakers, please mute any additional devices you have in the room to avoid any unnecessary background noise and the possibility of echoing. It is important that once your name is called, please wait two to three seconds to ensure City Council hears your complete remarks. Please begin your comments by identif identifying yourself, and please do not ask, can you hear me, as only one audio feed is open at a time, and we will be unable to respond. Speakers will be recognized in order in which they registered. Please note, if speaker does not respond or if a technical issue occurs, which renders the comments unlegible, then we will move on to the next registered speaker. Mayor and members of City Council, are there any questions about this process? Thank you. Mayor, I turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, and at this uh, point, we will move forward uh, to open nominations for Vice Mayor. And now we will recognize council members with their virtual hands uh, raised for nomination. And, uh, uh, Am I, un am I of the understanding a second is not necessary? Okay, uh, we will do the roll call first. Council Member Abbott. Aye. Council Member Berlucci. Present. Council Member Henley. Present. Council Member Jones. Present. Council Member Moss. Present. Council Member Rouse. Present. Council Member Tower. Present. Council Member Wilson. Aye. Council Member Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? 
Present. Mayor Dyer. Present. All present, Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, at this point, we will um, ask council to uh, you know, submit nominations for the position of vice mayor. Mayor, council member Wilson has her hand raised. Council member Wilson, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, at this time, it's my pleasure and honor to uh, nominate uh, the current mayor, Vice Mayor Jim Wood. Uh, he was first elected to the city council in 2002, and he's now serving his fifth consecutive term. He was sworn in as vice mayor on January 8th, 2019, after being selected by his peers. He's a 1981 graduate of Princeton High School. He earned a bachelor of science degree with special attainments in commerce from Washington Lee University in 1985 and a Master of Arts degree in History from Sam Houston Sam University, State University in 2016. After college, he served his community as a Virginia Beach police officer and was assigned to various specialty units, including DUI <clears throat> enforcement and a precinct level anti-crime team. He owns and manages firms engaged in commercial and general contracting and residential and commercial property management. He was a commissioner and two-time past chairman of the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads, which is HRT, and was appointed by the Virginia Senate to the Joint Subcommittee to address recurrent flooding. He is a city council liaison to the Audit Committee, the Bayfront Advisory Commission, the Board of Building Code of Appeals, Domestic Violence Fertility Review Team, the Green Ribbon Committee, the Health Advisory Board, the Military Economic Development Alliance Committee, Oceana Land Use Conformity Committee, the Sister Cities Association of Virginia Beach, the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Museum Foundation, and the Volunteer Council. He is past president of the Rotary Club of Cape Henry and past assistant governor for the Virginia Beach area and has served in leadership roles on the boards of many volunteer and nonprofit organizations. Wood and his wife, Rebecca, live in the Kings Grant area and have a son who is an attorney, a daughter working in higher education in Europe and three grandsons. And besides this stellar resume, I'd like to say that uh, the description of vice mayor is that he presides in case or he or she presides in case the mayor can't be there. Well, there's a lot more to it with our council. Maybe that's what other councils do. But in this, in our situation, we rely on our vice mayor to fill in and, and communicate with all the council members between the mayor and, and with staff and really help us get along through a lot of different issues and protocols and especially during budget season that communication tool because no more than two of us can get together or speak together at time is it's just really really extraordinarily helpful and of course there's the agenda planning sessions and you know filling in and he also you know had to fill in uh and a lot of numerous times uh we were re really relied on him heavily and he has done an outstanding job. And as you can tell from his resume, that experience is really extraordinary and it's someone that we really need to continue in this position. So I hope you all will support me supporting Jim Wood. Wilson, are there any other nominations from the council members? Mayor, council member Rouse has his hand raised. Council member Rouse, please wait three seconds and go ahead and start with your nomination. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, as I recall, when I came on in 2018, um, this nomination process was kind of quick and, um, and I'm not sure if how that was done before I was elected to council, but I believe, you know, there needs to be more of a, a robust conversation and electing vice mayor. Um, my hat is off to Vice Mayor Jim Wood, who has served um, last year, and I think he, well, the last term, and I think, you know, Vice Mayor Jim Wood did a, um, a very great job in representing our city. But now where we are, um, come 2021, um, I think a different perspective and um, having more, um, a different sense of leadership is needed for our city um, that will uh, be more uh, encompassing um, with different viewpoints from all of our different communities here in Virginia Beach. Um, with that being said, I think um, 
vice mayor, I would like to nominate um, Sabrina Wooten um, for vice mayor. I think she would do um, a, a great job representing our city. I think she can speak to different perspectives. Um, one that I think is missing um, now. Um, and also uh, think with her record and going forward um, with Mayor Dyer, I think they both would do uh, a solid job in uh, making sure that every member of council um, is heard from um, and also making sure that um, every segment of our community is is well um, represented. Um, again, my nomination is is not um, to say that uh, council or vice mayor Wood uh, didn't do a great job because I, I really do think he did. Um, I think he's well qualified for the position, um, but this nomination is, is in the step towards being um, not only diverse, but be more encompassing of, of the rest of city council and um, having a different um, view, um, the way we approach things within our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rex. Thank you, Mr. Rex. Are there any other nominations by council members? No, Mayor. Okay, at this time, uh, we have nominations for James Wood and Sabrina Wooten. Madam uh, Clerk, will you call the roll for Mr. Wood? Yes, sir. So for Mr. Wood, Council Member Abbott? Aye. Mr. Berlucci? Aye. Council Member Henley? Aye. Council Member Jones? Aye. Council Member Moss? Aye. Council Member Rouse? Nay. Council Member Tower? Nay. Council Member Wilson? Aye. Council Member Wooten? Aye. Or excuse me, I'm sorry, nay. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Eight to three, Mayor, for Mr. Wood. And I believe it's appropriate to have a roll call for Ms. Wooten, so uh, please do the roll call. Yes, sir. Council Member Abbott? Nay. Council Member Berlucci? Nay. Council Member Henley? Nay. Council Member Jones? Nay. Council Member Moss? Nay. Council Member Rouse? Aye. Council Member Tower? Aye. Council Member Wilson? Nay. Council Member Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Nay. Mayor Dyer? Nay. That is a vote of three to eight. Okay, thank you and thank you very much. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Mayor and Ms. Wooten. Thank you for be willing to step to the plate and uh, with Mr. Rouse's uh, uh, glowing endorsement. Okay, at this point, uh, we're gonna have a special resolution read. And I think this one kind of embodies you know, where we are as a city in terms of resilience and just tenacity going forward in the face of COVID. And this proclamation is the fact that, you know, we were the only city in the world that had a surfing competition. And, and by doing so, we actually broke a record. And, uh, I just think it really helps define us. So it is my privilege to read this proclamation at this point. Whereas the Virginia Beach JCs first formed in 1948 provided development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change in their community and have long a history in the establishment of several, several community projects. 
Whereas one such project, the East Coast Surfing Championships, created in 1963, invites surfers from the entire East Coast to compete for the title of champion of the Atlantic Coast. And whereas the Virginia Beach JCs have continued to provide the ECSC for nearly six decades on the shores of Virginia Beach. And whereas the ECSC sustained hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and global economic turndowns to become known as the longest running surf con uh, contest in the nation and second longest running in the world and that the ECSC has become internationally recognized event with up to 23 countries being represented by the professional riders and awarded close to $1 million in prizes to con uh, contestants since 2009. And whereas the ECSC's 50th anniversary in August of 200, uh, 2012, they hosted close to 200,000 guests and participa uh, participants during their seven-day event. And whereas in 2018, the ECSC event generated 25.8 million of economic activity, according to the Virginia Beach 2019 Resort Event Analysis, the most, uh, that the most among festivals and marathons. And whereas the growth of East Coast Surfing Championships created the need for more robust operational support and Resort Management LLC was contracted to take the lead helping to expand the ECSC's marketing platform and gain national partners, such as the event title sponsor, Coastal Bridge, in, uh, in support of the popular event. It, uh, whereas interest to volunteers for the ECSC also grew, attracting diverse and talented young professionals to support the event. The Virginia Beach JC selected one such volunteer, Tony Polino, to chair the 2020 event and lead the vast group of volunteers into the ECSC's 58th consecutive year, where they would face the biggest obstacle yet, a global pandemic. And whereas George Alcarez and Tony Polino worked tirelessly to adapt their planning to adhere to the governor's executive order, creating a comprehensive plan that including downsizing the event, incorporating major uh, safety measures, minimizing spectators, and opting to live stream the six-day event to 230,000 viewers worldwide, the ECSC 2020 event was able to move forward safely. And whereas because of the dedication and ingenuity, the Coastal Edge East Coast Surfing Champions has now garnered the honor of being the longest running surf event in the world. Therefore, I, Robert M. Dyer, Mayor of the Virginia Beach, do hereby proclaim January 5th, 2021, East Coast Surfing Championship Day. Well-deserved proclamation. Thank you very much. And Mr. Alcarez, I believe you have, might have a, please give us a comment. If you'll pause just three seconds and then you can begin your comments. Thank you so much. Mayor Dyer, Councilman, Council members, I want to, I really want to thank you for, for, you know, just, just letting the JCs know that, that you uh, appreciate what they've done. And again, in a year and a half, these JCs, Tony Polino here, the past chairman, I have beside me, Alex Pfizer, 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 sorry, are the president of the Virginia Beach JCs. In a year and a half, they'll be putting on this event for the 60th continuous years in Virginia Beach for you guys, the city of Virginia Beach. And I just want to thank you for your support and the staff support. And we look forward to having many more years. I think maybe Tony might want to say something. It's just an honor um, being a part of the history of the UCSC and to be able to work tirelessly to make this happen. And uh, you know, it's, it's for our community, it's for our citizens, and uh, we hope that you guys enjoy it and, and hopefully another 60 years coming up. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, and 
also I to say thank you to everyone and especially the support that we were able to garner from the city. I, without the support, we would not have been able to potentially pull this off uh, in a way that <laughs> made it successful um, and safe, most importantly, uh, through the hard work of these two gentlemen next to me and the collaboration of all of you being able to make this possible. And I'm looking forward to 2021, uh, in addition, in a year and a half to our 60th. Mayor Dyer, thank you. Uh, thanks for visiting us. And uh, Councilman uh, Rouse, thank you also for visiting us during the event. Thank you. Uh, let us applaud you. And we say that the strength of Virginia Beach are the people of Virginia Beach. And once again, the fact that you got this up and going, it was, in fact, I believe, a beacon of hope for that people saw uh, that we got our beaches open. We did a lot of things through a lot of effort with a lot of people that helped make the summer as successful as it could be. But let me just say this. It took a lot of people and effort. And you, by having that surfing opportunity, you know, for the people, you know, kudos to you. Well deserved, and look forward to working with you in the, the future. Okay, at this point, moving on to a public hearing on the declaration and sale of excess property. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, my apologies there. We got to get going with that. Okay, uh, at this point, can we have the minutes for the informal and formal sessions uh, a, uh, for December 8th, 2020? Do I have a motion? Council members, could I get somebody to raise their virtual hand if they'll make a second or a motion? Council member Wilson? So moved. Vice Mayor Wood? Second. Council member Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the minutes as submitted. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on now to the public hearing on the declaration and sale of excess property at 212 Fair Lady Road and vacant lot at the intersection of Fair Lady Road, Elon Drive, and uh, London Bridge Road. Mayor, we do not have any speakers. Okay, good. Uh, moving on now to the uh, formal and uh, consent agenda. I understand uh, that we just have a couple speakers on just a couple items. Yes, Mayor, we have speakers on K-1 and L-3. Okay, but we don't have uh, single uh, speaker items. So, M Mr. Wood, at this point, can we go ahead and do the uh, consent uh, agenda? Then I'll read the speaker's policy after that prior to calling the speakers. Vice Mayor Wood. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, just to clarify, I'll do the ordinance's resolution, and then I'll pause and let you open the public hearing on planning. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, I move for approval under the consent agenda the following items under ordinances or resolutions, item K2, resolution to nominate Andrew G. Ban, Thomas Leahy, and Mark Johnson to the governor as candidates for the position of Virginia Beach local representative to the Southeastern Public Service Authority. Item three, ordinance to donate reclaimed oyster shells to Lynn Haven River Now, Ray Mary Lou Gale Memorial Oyster Reef in the eastern branch of the Lynn Haven River. Item four, Resolution authorizes the city manager to execute a memorandum of understand agreement to contribute $500,000 to the Department of the Army Ray Lynn Haven Inlet Maintenance Dredging. Item five, 
ordinance to authorize the city manager to accept the dedication of residual rights for areas located in and near Croatan Beach, including Sandy Beach, streets, lanes, roads, avenues, and alleys, and the eastern portion of Lake Wesley from Bank of America N.A. trustee under the will of Amelia G. McLean, deceased August 25th, 1989, Family Trust. Item 6, ordinance to authorize a temporary encroachment into a portion of city-owned property known as Lake Joyce, located at the rear of 4404 Powell's Road, Powell's Point Road, Ray, install and maintain riprap. Item 7, ordinance to appropriate $335,730 from fund balance of the general fund for amounts reserved for pandemic relief and authorize a grant to Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center Foundation, Ray, food and beverage equipment and payroll support during the pandemic. Item 8, ordinance to accept and appropriate $18,790 from Federal Emergency Management Agency to the FY 2020-2021 Fire Department Operating Budget Ray Reimbursement of Costs Related to Deployment of Virginia Task Force 2 Urban Search and Rescue Team for Tropical Cyclone Delta. And I'll pause for the mayor to open a public hearing. Open a public hearing on planning. Open the public hearing on planning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item, under planning item L1, ENR Incorporated, Chesapeake Beach Commons LLC for a change in nonconformity, Ray demolish existing structure and build new outdoor dining structure within same footprint at 4600 Lookout Road in the Bayside District. Item two, Atherton Construction and Development Incorporated, Open Door Chapel Incorporated, for modification of conditions Ray religious use at 3177 Virginia Beach Boulevard in the Beach District. Item four, Scarlett Dawn Winley, Jennifer Williams, and Brandon Bullock for conditional use permit Ray home-based wildlife rehabilitation facility at 4933 Gulf Stream Circle in the Kempsville District. Item five, Shonda M. Bentley, Enoch and Shonda M. Bentley for a conditional use permit Ray home-based wildlife rehabilitation facility at 1204 Orkney Drive in the Kempsville District. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Council Member Wilson. Can, uh, I'm sorry, I, I need for her to say. Oh, okay. Second. Mayor okay, Dyer. Call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Council Member Abbott. Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? <laughs> Councilmember Jones? I'll come back. Council Member Moss? Aye, and I'm calling item L3, correct? Cal Council Member Rouse? Aye, aye, aye. Council Member Tower? Council Member Tower? Aye. Council Member Wilson? Aye. Council Member Wooten? Aye. Council Member Jones? Vice Mayor Wood. Aye. Aye. Council Member Jones. My 
Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, um, you've approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wood. Okay, now we will get into um, the hearings and I will read the script. I want to remind everyone that the City Council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal portion of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by council at the time you are called. When speakers are called on each item, the clerk will call on those individuals who have signed up to speak. After those who have signed up to speak have spoken, the chair will ask if there are any other persons who wish to speak on the item at hand. Those speakers will be allowed to speak and will be asked to give their name, address, and telephone number for the clerk to record. We had several items with only one speaker signed up as such. The city clerk will call the speaker and identify each item. Uh, the speaker will receive three minutes to comment on each item. The speaker must limit his or her comments to the speaker uh, subject matter of the items they have signed up to. And finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussion and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the city council wants to hear from you and to assure all viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way to do this is uh, uh, for us to, to strive for civility and respect. Okay, at this point, uh, we're uh, at uh, ordinance K-1, resolution to add a legislative request to the 2021 legislative agenda, Ray established the Virginia Beach Tourism Authority. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. We have three speakers. I will call Mr. Zirkel, Mr. Shesventer, and Ms. Munden. I'm starting with Mr. Zirkel. If you will pause three seconds and then begin your comments, please. Thank you, Mayor and City Council, for allowing me to speak tonight. I am John Zirkel, and I am representing the Virginia Beach Hotel Association and the CBB Community Task Force to ask for your support in adding the Virginia Beach Tourism Authority to the city's legislative agenda. In January of 2020, Council received Bill Hanbury's report, which outlined the numerous deficiencies of the current CBB and its structure. Soon after, Council agreed to form a community task force to review the options to improve the CBB and correct these deficiencies. I am proud to have been a member of this task force and for the fact that the task force in unanimous fashion with one abstention felt the need to alter the structure of the CBB so it can better compete and bring tourism dollars to our city. This recommendation was made after many hours of meetings, presentations and discussions. The CVB is one of those rare departments in the city that actually drives revenue and taxes to the city coffers. Thus, it needs to be handled differently than other departments in order to bring as much revenue and tax money as possible to our city. I hope you agree it is the city's, in the city's best interest to add the Virginia Beach Tourism Authority to the legislative agenda. There is no harm in adding this very important item to the agenda, as adding it to the agenda does not mean the council must implement the Tourism Authority, it merely gives Council the option to do so after completing its due diligence. Council did a very similar request a few years ago with the Arena Authority, which never came to fruition. We hope that the, we see a better result with this instance. Thank you for your service to our city and thank you for your support to this very important issue. Thank you. Next speaker, Conrad Shesventer. Please pause three seconds and begin your comments. My favorite part of this is the Convention and Visitors Bureau studied several plans and came away knowing that working with Virginia Beach HR to hire talent is a constricting hellscape to avoid. Uh, if I'm an expert in anything, my 0 for 130 Virginia Beach City job applications tells me Virginia Beach HR doesn't want to hire people. Um, I have two more bones to pick, and that's redundancy and diluting responsibility. 
There's a TIP fund, there's a TIF fund, there's a TAP fund, there's an EDIP fund, there's a Convention and Visitors Bureau, Resort Advisory Committee, an Advertising Advisory Committee, Beaches and Waterways Advisory Committee. There's a Development Authority. There's a Department of Economic Development within that authority. There's an Old Beach Design Committee. There's a Planning Committee, a Community Development Authority. All these boards, by the way, I've submitted myself to the Talent Bank applications to be considered for. There are superfluous stacking of bureaucratic redundancies, and they inflate our city budgets. They also move responsibility from our elected council body over to new boards, which aren't democratically accountable to the people. Come on, guys. Council members are elected to be decision makers. I know because I ran three times to be part of that process. Each time I ran, I was against tens of thousands of dollars in corporate money, big hotel, big restaurant, big resort area interest, and this new authority. The idea of it is the type that those bodies special interests crave. Um, to put it bluntly, city council is hooked on the drug called oceanfront tourism, and it needs to stop searching for its next hit. Instead, look at a healthier lifestyle like newer flooding solutions, stronger transit, and affordable housing. Take it from someone who wanted to be on council for exactly a moment like this, voting against such an idea so council members don't transfer away the power bit by bit. Thank you. Thank you. MC Munden, please pause three seconds and then begin your comments. Good evening. This is MC Munden, Cape Story by the City resident. And uh, I would recommend that the Virginia Beach Tourism Authority legislative request uh, not sending this request to for approval. And because there are three, I'll repeat that, there are three Virginia Beach uh, commissions that may well address tourism. One is the RAC, the Resort Advisory Commission. Then there's that, the Bayfront Advisory Commission, and the Beaches and Waterways, Beaches and Waterways b and Commission. And I am a member currently of the B&W Commission. I was appointed to the sand, for the Sandbridge event housing issue in 2015. And with annual filing of my conflict of interest documents, um, I have been reappointed. Um, though you might not reappoint me this year, I'm not sure. Um, I would suggest engaging these three commissions with our city manager, who I believe has the insight and experience to expand and improve our tourism business, working with the noted commissions. Uh, the citizens of Virginia Beach do not need another oversight authority that is not elected in my opinion. Thank you. Mayor, that's all the speakers. Okay, do I have a motion? Council members, could I get somebody to raise their virtual hand if they would like to make a motion and a second? Mr. Tower? Uh, I move the adoption of the uh, ordinance to place this matter on the agenda for the current uh, session of the General Assembly. Uh, Mr. Zirkel summed it up pretty well. I, I'm not going to anticipate all the arguments. I think some of them were made by Ms. Munden and Mr. Shazventer about whether or not we need another uh, organization. I, I, th I tend to think we do, but um, I, I could I could change my mind with with a little more information. Certainly, there's always room for more information. But there were specific reasons that this task force, which spent a long time, uh, I'm sure they would agree it was a long time, uh, uh, studying available material and some fairly expert advice, coming to the conclusion that. Uh, an authority looked like the certainly the likeliest way to proceed that would do accomplish a number of uh, good things for the beach. One one would be to have a more nimble, responsive marketing organization that really performed. That is something we have lacked for quite a while. Uh, I don't think there's much disagreement about that. Uh, we've tried. We, I believe the CVB has been at one time in the economic development department. It's 
Uh, it's been largely farmed out with under contracts to uh, advertising uh, uh, public relations type firms. It's been brought back in house. Uh, maybe it was just the personnel involved and with the right personnel uh, having it in house would work. But I think there are some structural issues uh, and certainly the advice of uh, our uh, consultant that was working with us and the good judgment of uh, almost all, I uh, certainly a vast majority of the stakeholders who, uh, who I believe many, uh, many of them are directly involved in the business of tourism, which somehow has gotten to be uh, a, a, disqual a, a disqualifying uh, uh, qualification for for some in terms of making judgments, but in it really should be these people to whom we are listening because they are in it, in the business themselves, day in day out, and know not only the business but they know Virginia Beach as well, and I think their views passed on to us through the near unanimous recommendation that we proceed with a tourism authority for Virginia Beach uh, should be honored, at least insofar as uh, it goes to asking the General Assembly to uh, create such an authority that we might take advantage of if we choose to do so. The option that's been suggested is put it put it away for and study it for a year. And that's how long we it would take because we certainly couldn't come back until uh, probably a year from now. Uh, our resort area really needs to get ahead of the curve. In a way, we've been lucky that our convention center, which was sitting virtually empty before we started on this process and is one of the reasons that we started the process, uh, ha has continued to be closed and not booking events, but so is everybody else's, which gives us the opportunity to try to pull ourselves up and get into a more competitive mode with whether it's Myrtle Beach or Ocean City or any other of our uh, uh, many, many competitors in the tourist industry. I think that uh, I think that we can get the General Assembly to give us that authority so that we can return to the recommendation of the task force and see what it would take to implement it. There are differences of opinion about whether or not and how to imp implement this uh, process, even if there were agreement that we needed, it, needed to have a different model, so to speak. But it's clear that there are strong advantages to doing it in the authority model. There may be disadvantages as well. Those were considered to some degree uh, by the, by the uh, task force and perhaps not to the degree that some on council would like to see. And I'm certainly willing to hear from those on council about those and to join with them in studying this matter. I simply see no reason not to take advantage of the fact that the General Assembly is about to meet, we can adopt this uh, uh, plan. I don't think our our uh, delegation of the General Assembly are gonna, are gonna object to, to uh, doing it. I think they understand what we're trying to do. I think we can make it clear to them that uh, I don't want anybody to be misled that we have made a final determination that we're gonna have create this authority. But the timing is such that we are able to have the General Assembly act and we have that, then the ability to move to the authority in, our, in a more timely way than waiting for at least a year to get it done. Um, I know that Mr. Moss has spent a great deal of time on this, which I certainly respect. I respect his opinion, I respect his expertise, I respect the time he spent. I do think some of the statements and some of the material that he's forwarded to, uh, to us are, are misleading in some ways. I don't think he int intended to mislead, but 
for example, the, the references in the letter that he sent to us on December 30th, uh, a couple of the early paragraphs begin with the word staff has affirmed to me. I just want to point out that there are certain things that staff has, a, has affirmed, but not everything in those paragraphs in the language that follows are necessarily things that staff affirmed to Mr. Moss. Some of them are his conclusions from things that staff may have affirmed to him. And I think those are conclusions are significantly uh, subject to doubt because in terms of whether they are practical answers. They may be theoretically possible, but there's no indication that they are practical. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, his insistence that we should not proceed until we get a written declaration from the city of manager that he, under no circumstances, could 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 uh, have the do a good job with this in house seems to me to be uh, not what we need to be dealing with at this point. In that, that we're not, it's not going to happen. And, and I think Mr. Moss knows that. And it is simply putting up an artificial obstacle to kind of getting on with the business of dealing with what uh, I think is well recognized, even by Mr. Moss, as some problems with our tourism uh, alignment, so to speak. Um, I think that's all I have, but I'd like to defer to Ms. Wilson because she co-chaired this committee with me and she may have some other comments uh, to make. I welcome those. Thank you. Okay, thank you, but uh, we had a motion. I believe we need a second to continue the conversation. Council Member Wilson. Yes, I would like to second um, Mr. Tower's motion and uh, I think Dr. Uh, Mr. Zirkel and uh, Mr. Tower stated it really well. Um, and, and first of all, this is just a, a time for, we really need this vote tonight to be able to move forward. Otherwise it's gonna stagnate it for another year. And we will really be behind the eight ball because once this pandemic and the that vaccine is up and running and people are gonna be anxious to get going and doing things, it, we're going to be behind the eight ball if we get delayed another year. But this is also going to give us the time to iron at the kinks and see if this is what we really want to do in the next six months. So um, this is really just giving us a mother may I permission to, to move forward and make sure this is what we want to do rather than missing out for another year. So I, I hope the council will support it. Um, there was a lot of hard work put into it, a lot of good people involved that are in, that are in the industry, um, and a lot of the different industries that support tourism. And it's a chance for our city to uh, do better in tourism than we've been doing, especially that beautiful convention center that we have. And now that we have the sports center, that's just another great opportunity of, of moving forward and doing some really great things. So, um, I also wanted to point out that even the state has a tourism authority and we uh, were able to virtually meet with them and, and hear from them. So the, st the state has one as well. So uh, I hope you will join Mr. Tower and I tonight. Thank you. Mayor, there's no other virtual hands raised. I'm sorry, Council Member Moss. And then begin your comments. Well, thank you. And I'd like to, in response to my, my honorable colleague, Mr. Tower, I don't raise artificial obstacles. And, but I do have a prepared statement. So you all will have to bear with me as I share with the public the reasoning for my vote. I have shared with the council before a very thorough analysis of the report. It draws conclusions that would require inferential statistics based on descriptive statistics. It's analytically not a rigorous product. It makes assertions that are unobstantiated by empirical evidence. And I have laid that all out in a very extensive PowerPoint, but I would hope that the 
my body would allow me to enter that into the record as if it was done slide by slide for the benefit of time. So with no objection, I would ask that that be incorporated into the minutes as well as my comments. My remarks to follow are offered as the reasoning for my vote. I respect that my peers may have different reasoning for their respective votes. The judgment on my reasoning and that of my peers exclusively rests with you, the beach residents. Council members are your employees and are only accountable to you. At the outset, we are all in agreement that tourism is a vital part of our economy. The majority of the tourism industry, which is individual tourists, families, organized groups, tourists driven by events and convention attendees. The competitiveness of the tourism industry, the shifting demographics of the tourism industry necessitate marketing. The question before us is not the merits of marketing. The question is, should $30 million of beach residents tax dollars for marketing be transferred to and spent by an autonomous, non-elected, independent political subdivision of the Commonwealth with no direct accountability to the voters? That is the question embedded in this legislative proposal. The item on the agenda tonight and the motion on the table for its adoption has received very little discussion among council members in prior informal and formal sessions and an unprecedented lack of public engagement given the magnitude of the proposal to realign the inherent authority and responsibilities for a particular function from the city council for whom the people elect to a non-elected appointed body. This proposed legislation was first briefed to the city council in early December, and a public was here. hearing was held on the 15th at the start of the holiday season. There was little publicity to this proposal in advance of the public hearing, and the city council as a body has had no meaningful public examination and discussion of the task force findings and recommend recommendations, not to mention the merits of transferring the city council's responsibilities to an autonomous new political entity known as the Tourism Development Authority. In my conversations with local delegates, we might not have an easier path as we think in the General Assembly. Tonight, I was looking for hopefully a deferral. that We would do the serious discussions. But obviously, that's not the case. Unfortunately, now I will be talking about where I am. Now, this talks about should the General Assembly grant the proposed request that your city council speaking to the public by six or four more six or more votes could authorize transferring council, meaning the people's authority, the people's responsibility for directing and spending tax dollars for tourism now vested in your elected city council to a non-elected board, not accountable to the voters and politically and legally independent of city council. One would think that before proposing such a structural authority realignment of the people's sovereignty, since council serves at the people's consent to exercise the people's power that they grant us, that we would have extensive and exhaustive engagement with beach residents would have preceded the vote and the motion on the table today. Such is not the case. Instead, this topic came to what limited public visibility it has received during the holiday season of many faiths. This motion is effectively asking the General Assembly to unilaterally modify their covenant, which beats residents for which our city charter is the legal and symbolic manifestation of that covenant to enable us, the city council, to unilaterally transfer the authorities and powers for which we are just the custodian to an independent, unelected political subdivision with no direct accountability to beach voters. Before my peers respond that just because we are asking for the authority does not mean we will use it, well, I would respond, well, we are just wanting to have the option. True enough, it just gives the option, but making this request is the rejection that we are just exercising the people's power. We cannot ask to transfer that which we as elected officials do not own without the voters' direct consent by referendum. Now, if the wording of this request was that the voters in a referendum would have to approve 
be established and set authority. That would go a long way to correcting the lack of recognition of who owns the authority we are proposing to be transferred. The issue of insufficient public engagement before a council vote is a process shortfall. But putting aside for a moment that the proposal as written, in my judgment, is an end justify the means proposal that violates all the governing principles we learn in civics. Let us identify the two questions you should answer as the public on the technical merits of what is being proposed. First, has the case been made that the mission of tourism marketing of the city cannot be effectively and efficiently executed under our city council city manager form of government due to inherent shortfalls in the capabilities and the capacities of our city government. Question, I will share with you what I judge that such is not the case been made. Now, some would say the point that we can do are theoretical. The powers that we really have are practical. It's just the will to use and leverage the discretionary authority that the city council has, and I'll talk about that later. The second question, has the case been made that a non-elected political subdivision of the Commonwealth in the form of a tourism development authority appointed by city council, but legally independent and autonomous from city council and not accountable to the voters will be more effective and efficient in tourism marketing. There is no such empirical evidence offered in that report, no inferential statistics, no case study analysis in that task force findings. And then the PowerPoint that I will be part of the record lays that out and people can secure that from the city clerk. The argument that almost every other city does it this way is a fact. It is not proof that the benchmark practice is the best or that by fully leveraging the discretion that the city council has to organize and structure the execution of tourism marketing function cannot match or outperform the benchmark practice. As Peter Thiel, the founder of PayPal, along with Elon Musk, in his book, Zero to One, laid out the compelling case, you cannot gain a significant market advantage and thus market share by chasing or imitating the benchmark practice. You need to invent and implement a business model that displaces the benchmark practice a new model that outpaces the performance of your competitors. As examples, Sony had to create its own in-house battery research lab that led actually to the first lithium battery as the industry vested in nickel cadmium batteries were not interested in investing new technology beyond the then benchmark. PayPal, Facebook, Google, that built what never existed. They went from a zero state and established a new platform, if you would, that created a new state. They move beyond the benchmark practice by several orders of magnitude and set in motion a revolution still playing itself out today. Now, true enough, the private sector does not have to demonstrate the loyalty and fidelity to democratic Republican, that's small d, small r, principles of our governance structure. But now, true enough, these examples reflect what private capital and high risk taking with high rewards with private money, I emphasize, can deliver in terms of change and new wealth enabled by individual leadership and drive. But leadership and drive are not unique providences of private institutions. And we're proposing this thing to just create another governmental institution. It's not private. The affections of government to inertia doesn't frequently deny governments the ability to demonstrate zero to one behavior. Under this recommendation, we're just moving all the people into the new organization that's also a government organization. So it's hard to argue that we have this new revolutionary culture in what is basically the same thing with a new name and higher cost. The city council, which is a continuous body, unlike Congress or the General Assembly that has individual sessions, is accountable for the past successes and failures of our Tourism Convention Bureau. Because why? It's an inherent function of the government, and it's something that belongs to the people that we exercise on their behalf. The City Council has the opportunity and the obligation to fully leverage its existing authorities and discretion to design and implement the zero to one in-house model that outperforms 
the current benchmark practice without abandoning our principles and our duty to beach residents not to unilaterally transfer their trust, their sovereignty, their function, their government, their money to a non-elected, non-accountable institution. And council liaisons are not legal accountability institutions. We have the authority to create customized compensation structures for micro parts of our organization. Now you can say that's theoretical, but it's not. It's just our willingness to do it. We have the authority to create customized employment status. That's doable. We have the authority to realign authorities that are, exist to create more vertically aligned functions into a unified decision-making structure, which can certainly match the agility of another governmental institution. The city HR department, they have affirmed that this is possible. Is it easy to do? Nothing that's worth doing usually is ever easy, but can we do it? Yes, we can. Was it ever examined exhaustively by this task force? No, it was not. While the city, excuse me, while the city is not exempt from the Competitive Procurement Act, which in my judgment is a positive characteristic that guards against cronyism and corruption in procurement, the Economic Development Director, who's temporarily in charge of procurement and purchasing, has affirmed that there are procurement tools, such as indefinite quantity contracts, time and material contracts, consulting services contracts, that can be bundled with sufficient scope and dollar ceilings and options that offer competitive awards that can offer the adaptability and agility that our marketing mission requires. Once again, does it take hard work? Absolutely, but I think protecting what we need to do and, and holding on to city council's responsibilities. I didn't take this job to delegate my scope of authority and my responsibility and accountability away without the voters' active consent. Last July, we, bought on, we brought on board an outstanding and forward-thinking city manager to advance our organizational culture and to increase the agility and productivity of our mission execution. Thus far, Patrick has not disappointed us. This council has just had to provide Patrick the direction to come back with a new in-house delivery model for tourism that maximizes the city's flexibility authorities that we have that council has to approve. I have great faith in Matt Patrick's managerial leadership. I judge that we owe it to Patrick the opportunity to come back with a proposal on how to address council's guidance. What I don't see to my peers on council is what you're going to say to the members of the General Assembly that I've talked to is why you're transferring away authority and responsibility that is currently vested in the city council and we exercise under the city charter that is owned by the public, but yet we're not making this transfer subject to approval of the voters in a referendum, just like the charter was itself adopted. And we're giving that away unilaterally and saying, we can't do this job. I don't believe that. And that task force report, I don't care all the experts in it, didn't make that case. And I'm happy to appear in any forum on any stage and discuss that and go through that and show just where the flaws are. And I've done that in writing already. For all the foregoing reasons, I cannot support asking the General Assembly to approve the request for the authority in the future for us to transfer away this city council's authority and responsibility that is ultimately the possession of the people, not us the people for who we serve at their consent with the power that they possess, that they consent to let us use to a third independent, unaccountable political entity to the voters. Now, maybe my peers, you could find that comfortable. I do not. I leave it to the voters to view the proceedings today and to draw their own judgments and then to contact their members of the General Assembly to communicate their opposition or their support. But there should be no doubt. My recommendation is that you should communicate that this request has not should not be taken up in the 30 day short session. And that you should request that your, our members of our delegation advise the city council to conduct a more robust engagement with the public before bringing this proposal back for the General Assembly. And it should be subject to ratification by the voters in a referendum if the authority is 
the authority to grant this, the established authority would be created. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, anyone else? Yes, Mayor. Council Member Wilson, if you'll pause three seconds and then begin your comments, please. Sorry, I just didn't uh, lower my hand before. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Council Member Berlucci, if you'll pause three seconds and then begin your comments, please. Thank you. Uh, I just want to, sorry, I'm going to turn my video on. Great, thanks. Uh, I just want to take a moment to um, just explain my position on uh, this particular vote. It's hard to compete with the eloquence of Councilman Moss, but um, I would like to take a slightly different point of view than the one he expressed. Um, the vote today is about um, asking the General Assembly for the tool to reconsider how we structure our Convention and Visitors Bureau and other communities is known as a destination marketing organization. Uh, we owe it to the uh, residents of Virginia Beach who work in the uh, tourism and hospitality industries, to the employers who are part of that industry and to um, you know members of the Virginia Beach and in fact really Rose community who rely everything we can to be as competitive, um, innovative, strategic thinking as we can possibly be, not only to make our um, resort and a tourism uh, amenities um, as competitive as possible in an increasingly competitive marketplace, but also um, to uh, do everything we can to support this industry that's really been decimated and devastated by the impacts of COVID-19. And I think what the request that's before us today is about is um, adding tools to our toolbox and um, giving us the ability to have um, more levers to pull in how to uh, place our um, our community in this vital industry in the most competitive light as possible. Um, that's why I'm uh, comfortable making a yes vote to ask the General Assembly for uh, for that tool. Uh, but I will say that um, I think that some points have been expressed that are extremely valid. And those points are that we have to have a much more robust and complete and thorough dialogue about the pros and the cons and what the advantages and disadvantages of a program like this might be for our community and for the tourism and hospitality industry. It's increasingly with COVID and, and can't see each other in person and I'm not sure if I have been cut off. It looks like I'm back. Uh, anyhow, um, it's increasingly, it, uh, it's just very difficult to have this conversation and we haven't had it. And, um, you know, for me personally, I just want to express that I'm a long way from uh, being comfortable with, uh, with the notion of making this change. But I am comfortable with the points on how on all the different things we should consider but that's a conversation for another day uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it weren't for the fact that the general assembly is meeting beginning to meet next week and and therefore we've got to do everything we can we can to support this industry and most importantly the people who work within this industry so um anyhow i hope that uh clarifies my position and i thank you for your time Council Member Abbott, if you'll pause two to three seconds and then begin your comments, please. Thank you. Um, I am getting a lot of feedback, but so I apologize if that's coming through at all on my side. Um, I want to thank uh, the council members that have worked as liaisons on this ordinance and for their hard work and diligence, especially through uh, this period of time, it is very difficult to be productive in a meeting setting when we're having to, to, to reinvent how we are doing public input and in our engagement. Um, that said, uh, I agree with a lot of the sentiments that have been said by uh, Councilman Berlucci and Councilman Moss. I have had a lot of soul searching on this resolution in terms of 
what my comfort level was. And, and like Councilman Moss, I, I have some reluctancy in supporting it, uh, mainly due to what I feel is maybe potentially a kind of a conflicting message, at least in how the ordinance read. We talk, we've talked a lot about why the model we have doesn't work. And I think everybody is in agree, mostly in agreement with that we are obviously not meeting the metrics in this industry that we would like to. Uh, and so I think that there's probably a lot of um, uh, agreement in that regard. I certainly agree when this was first, uh, when it was first came to my attention, I was frankly a little surprised as, as to how it was working and, and felt that there was definitely room for significant improvement. So I don't, I don't think that this conversation is really about if we, I, don't, I think this conversation is, in, we're in agreement that we all agree that there's an issue and that it's more about the execution of the solution. Um, and although I'm not completely opposed to some city support for organiza an organization aimed at increasing the support for our small businesses, even if it's just at the oceanfront, but tourism in general, um, I, I don't really feel like this tool is really doing what it aims to do in that it kind of illustrate this private model, but would be mostly funded by the city, but again, lose that accountability in, in my perspective. So I'm, I'm not sure where the majority of my colleagues land on this. I look forward to forward, look forward to additional discussions and how this plays out if this does go to the General Assembly for their consideration and they do decide to grant um, us permission to create such an authority. I hope that we are um, prepared to do rigorous outreach and get as much feedback from the public as possible because it is uh, potentially a very large bill with a, a lot of control that we would be giving up. But I am complete, in complete agreement that we need to be innovative and forward thinking on how we address the current market, market conditions for our tourism industry as well as the future ones, which are, I think, largely in question. Thank you. Councilmember Berlucci, I just want to verify that uh, if you have comments, your hand is still up. Any more comments at this time? Okay, thank you. If I can make a short comment. Obviously, what we have to do with our tourism industry is get to yes, to get to success. You know, I guess the reason we're here is that their perception and reality that, you know, it, the convention business has been underperforming for quite some time now. Uh, we have to find an innovative way to, way to do it. But once again, I think this is just a step. And I will just say I'm going to support at least sending it to the General Assembly. But once again, I do have skepticism. Uh, is there a better way we could do it? So I think by going to the General Assembly at this point and just asking. But all, the ultimate determinant of this is going to be this body. And, uh, you know, it will facilitate much discussion, much engagement going forward. But as we go through, and I think what we proved that with the COVID, that, the, you know, things at the oceanfront and convention business is vital to the DNA of Virginia Beach. Is there a better way to do it? I would like to look at if we could just flat out outsource it. I don't know. It could be a simple solution. Maybe, maybe not. I have a great concern about paying somebody associated with the city a, a, sal a, a salary that is rather significant. And I think about other things like uh, police, fire, EMS, and teachers that, it, it, you know, once again, there's a whole matrix here that we have to think about going forward with making a decision of this magnitude. But uh, that being said, uh, since we're going, uh, we have a motion and a second for approval. Madam Clerk, if we can move forward with the roll. Yes, sir. Council Member Abbott? Nay. Council Member Berlucci? Aye. Council Member Henley? Aye. Council Member Jones? I 
couldn't understand. <laughs> Council Member Jones. <laughs> Nay. Council Member Moss. I said no. Council Member Rouse. Aye. Uh, Council Member Tower. Uh, Council Member Wilson. Aye. Uh, Council Member Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of eight to three, you have adopted the resolution to add the legis legislation request. Okay, thank you. Uh, this point, and once again, there will be uh, serious deliberations and conversations go, uh, going forward on this. You know, obviously, it's something that merits much more consideration, but ultimately, the goal is to help out the tourism industry. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're on planning item um, three. Do we have any speakers? Yes, Mayor. We have three speakers, Rob Beeman, Taylor Franklin, and Jay Boone. First, I will call Rob Beeman. Please pause three seconds and then begin your, your comments. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of council, for the record, my name is Rob Beeman. I'm a local land use attorney at the Troutman Pepper Law Firm. Uh, joining me this afternoon or this evening is Taylor Franklin. Taylor does not need to make separate remarks unless there are questions for him. Uh, this application involves property located on South Military Highway between Providence Road and Indian River Road, which is currently used for industrial purposes by a general contractor. The applicant proposes to rezone the property from unconditional B2 to conditional A24 to accommodate a 220 unit apartment complex with outdoor pool, clubhouse, and other indoor and outdoor amenities. The applicant has taken great care to design the site in a way that will minimize impacts on adjacent single family homes. To that end, the proposed apartment buildings have been pushed up towards this military highway as far as possible from the residential uses to the rear. Additionally, the buildings closest to the rear have been reduced to three stories in height, while those along military will be forced towards. Uh, with respect to traffic, as is noted in the planning staff report, this project would generate much less traffic than the commercial uses that are otherwise permitted by right under the current B2 zoning classification. Additionally, as the staff requested as part of the staff review of this project, uh, the applicant will construct a dedicated right turn lane with an existing right of way, which is shown on the proper site plan. I also wanted to point out from a traffic perspective that all access to the site will be provided directly from military highway. There will be no pedestrian or vehicular access provided through the neighborhoods to the rear of the site. Finally, I wanted to touch on stormwater. Uh, this project will implement the first modern stormwater system that this property has ever had. As a result of that, uh, stormwater that currently flows off the site will be retained on site and released into the public system at lower rates than, than at present. Additionally, the project would involve a reduction in the total amount of impervious area on the property from the current 76% down to 69%, which will further reduce the amount of stormwater uh, leaving the site. So to summarize, um, the proposed redevelopment of the subject property would constitute an aesthetic upgrade of the property, would be compatible with surrounding land uses and would bring much needed affordable housing to this part of the city. With that, we certainly uh, thank you for your time and consideration of the application. We'll stand by for any questions you have. Any questions? Okay, move on. 
Mayor, the next speaker is Jay Boone. Jay Boone, if you please wait three seconds and then you can begin your comments. Good evening and happy new year to council. Um, as a resident of the Franklin Johnson property, I witnessed Frank firsthand how the management company, uh, their transition plan for their acquired property. The way that they cleared out undesired tenants and raised rents. I had leaks, mold, and pests during my time there. And once the pandemic started, instead of sending out letters of concern for tenants during their, these unprecedented times, they made sure that we knew that we can make payments online because verify, after verifying with the company, they fully expected their rent on the first. After having my hours reduced at work, I was not able to continue living, living in my residence and I moved out towards the end of 2020. I was blessed to have family to rely on in these times, and I had but I had neighbors not so blessed. Neighbors with kids and nowhere to go. The moment the moratorium um, was lifted, they put notices on people's doors. Outside, the, outside of council taking my experiences into account, as well as other as well as the other reviews of this company that have given them a 3.2 rating. My plea to council is as we enter into 2021, that we take a step back and consider the opportunity you have to be able to not only look out for your citizens, but to set a bar for businesses looking to lay ground within the city. The monopoly that companies like TFJG are creating uh, would probably not be bad strictly from a business standpoint, but from the standpoint of being good for the community at large, it's not good. This 220 unit community could mean that 220 families could get the same heartless letter that me and so many others received. Virginia Beach has, want, has a chance to decide going forward that if businesses want to make profits off of citizens, that they operate in a manner that benefits them. This area has the luxury because of the military component here to have our markets completely um, to have our markets not completely crash during tough times. Because of this leg up, wouldn't it do the city well to vet companies coming into the city to do business or even better, look at it, look at what the city is lacking and actively invite these industries or businesses to develop here. I, I believe by doing so we can help map out an even more prosperous Virginia Beach, but more importantly, it will help to ensure that the culture of the area makes sure that the citizens are looked out for going forward. And I don't believe that the Franklin Johnson group has those uh, values in mind. And I would plead that if nothing else, that the council denies their claim to try to uh, develop and looks into the company and looks into the complaints that have already been put out there by residents that have lived there to see how uh, they are operating their businesses for the betterment of Virginia Beach. Thank you. Mr. Beeman, did you have uh, any other additional comments in rebuttal? Uh, no, ma'am, not specifically. I'm, I'm not aware of the circumstances giving rise to Ms. Pui's uh, specific comments. Uh, certainly, Franklin Johnson Group operates a number of properties very successfully in the city of Virginia Beach and, and elsewhere in the state and manages uh, many, many units throughout the country very successfully and is very highly thought of. So I'm not, not sure uh, of, of the specific circumstances, again, giving rise to Ms. Jones' comments. Um, they do not appear to be directed towards the, um, the specific site. Mayor, we don't have any other comments. I'm sorry. We, he's I think he's having technical and uh, difficulties on his end. Okay. Um, at this point, um, Ms. Abbott, would you like to make a uh, motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would Just like pause to pause two to three seconds and then begin your comments. Now, to at various points in the day over the holiday and um, even as recent as yesterday. and. I, in my view, I think this is an appropriate location for this type of density. Um, there is a number of small businesses in the immediate area that I think would benefit from the additional, ho additional housing. 
Um, and I think that's something we should be considering when we look at these um, larger scale, uh, higher density developments in terms of how they can benefit the surrounding community. Um, I have also not heard from any residents in the immediate area, um, and I believe that the developer uh, also reached out to the um, neighbors adjacent to the, that would be directly impacted um, by the development. It is um, currently uh, not a very attractive uh, piece of land, so I think that this would bring a, a much needed benefit to the area. I'd, I'd also like to just say this is a, I think, oftentimes an overlooked part of our city. It's, um, it has a lot of um, wonderful mom and pop shops nearby, and, and I think there are a lot of wonderful residents that would that would like to see the area come up into its own, and, and I think that this could be a good first step. So um, I would like to move for approval. Do we have a second? Council members, if I could get uh, somebody who's going to second it. Council member Rouse, you raised your virtual hand first. I second the motion. Also, um, just wanted to just mention, um, you know, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that we need to make affordable housing a priority, um, especially in the city of Virginia Beach. You know, our city isn't the most affordable city to live in. And so we need to make this a priority not only for, um, the workers, uh, you know, our teachers and those who work in the hospitality industry, but also our first responders as well. Um, and I think, you know, the Franklin Johnson group, the, the projects that they have done well within the city has been first class all the way. Um, and so I, I second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Yes, Mary. Councilmember Moss, please pause two to three seconds and then begin your comments. I have a question first. I have a comment later. My question first is, has anyone, given what we define as affordable housing, does this complex, based on what we understand the rents to be, fall within the HUD definition of affordable housing, like the complexes that we built, that were built on Witch Duck Road? I don't know who can, who's there to answer that, but when... People use affordable housing a lot, but I see a lot of apartment complexes and they don't fall into the range of what HUD would consider to be affordable housing. So who's who's defining that for this application and what is that definition and does it match the definition that we use by the city and under federal programs? You know, I think that is uh, Mr. Moss, a question that we could look forward into a future as you know, obviously I do concur with Mr. Ross. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tahan, if you would just pause three seconds and then begin your comments. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moss. The Applicant did not directly state that they are um, constructing affordable housing on the site. The land use application was reviewed based on the uh, multifamily proposal that they have um, and it being in the uh, suburban focus area for military highway. Uh, the applicant would have to speak to the proposed rents and to the um, what they plan on doing for affordable housing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tahan. Mr. Moss, is there a follow-up? Well, I wouldn't, I'm not, I just wanted to make sure that in fact, that as we, as affordable housing is defined, this application hasn't been made on that behalf. So, so that gets back to my other point, since we aren't really creating affordable housing at this location relative to a, the federal definition of federal affordable housing, then my concern is this is nine and a quarter acres of maybe not today the best B2 we would like, but it is a major commercial thoroughfare. We often talk about trying to shift the balance between residential and non-residential tax base. And I understand in the current marketplace, B2 is not as attractive 
as apartments, because you can go on the internet and see return rates of 22%, 28%, 19% for uh, apartments. So I understand the demand, but our, our, as we're looking towards not just today, but tomorrow and trying to say, if we keep converting all our property that's not in ACUS areas and can be developed as commercial, as we understand how the commercial environment are operates, and we turn all that into residents, then we have to just acknowledge that we are going to remain principally a tax base that's never going to get past about maybe 80-20 or maybe 75-25, and we're never going to make that, and that has implications. And I sometimes think that we lose sight of that when we're looking at these uh, assessments for zoning, when we're deciding to take what not knowing what the future could bring for commercial and we're taking those opportunities away and we're turning it into residents, which aren't the same thing as creating those places that might create jobs. And I think that's getting getting lost in the, in the, in the scheme of things as we look, Every, because the current marketplace is reward, rewarding multi, has, multi housing has a higher return on investment today but we're hopefully building a city for the long-term future. And I don't know that we're actually assessing the implications of consistently turning commercial property into residences. And, and is that really the choice that we wanna make on a ma major thoroughfare? And I would agree with the Jessica that it is in an area that's often neglected because it's on the fringe. It's not the ocean front, it's not the town center. It's like many neighborhoods that aren't in those areas. They're on the fringe of our resource allocation. That's a given, but I don't know that we took that into account. And I, they do make great projects and they do have great returns or they wouldn't be moving, but have we really thought about, are we mortgaging our future just to get residents today and the housing isn't affordable? And that's my point. And, and for that reason, uh, I would love to support my good friend, uh, Jessica, but, I, I think we're making the wrong long-term choice, not because the project itself is bad, but we're undoing commercial property that we have so little of, and so we're taking away future opportunities that we don't know about. So I'm voting no. Anybody else? Council Member Rouse? If you'll pause just three seconds and then begin your comments, please. I would just uh, ask, uh, listen to Mr. Moss's um, comments, if the um, if the applicant lawyer or the applicant wanted to um, speak to the affordability of it, because I'd like to understand that as well. Mr. Beeman. If you could pause two to three seconds, uh, if you'd like to make a comment um, and answer answer the question by Mr. Rouse and Mr. Moss. Yes, and thank you. Uh, my understanding from my client is that they intend for this property to meet the uh, definitions of affordability under as promulgated both by the um, uh, Housing and Urban uh, Development Department and uh, VHDA. Uh, I believe Taylor Franklin is on the line and, and he has more specifics. Um, I would defer to Taylor at this time. Mr. Taylor Franklin, uh, if you would just pause two to three seconds and then you can begin your comment. Sure, Th thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor and uh, fellow council people, uh, th thank you for the opportunity to speak. To answer Mr. Uh, Councilman Moss's question, um, <clears throat> yes, it is a, a very similar to what we did off of Witch Duck, which is a which was a 264 unit affordable housing development deal, and then a mixed use deal that we did off of um, um, Witch Duck Road, a 240 unit mixed use deal with um, rents based on the median income between 40 and 80%. Uh, this development will be a 220 20 unit affordable deal. Um, we are working with the housing office with Andy Freeman and his staff, as well as VHDA to apply for 9% and 4% tax credits in March. And we intend to get those and 
create a fantastic development that's very much needed in the city of Virginia Beach for affordable housing. Uh, thank you. That's encouraging. And, uh, you know, I know in our discussions, you, you and your company are committed to, you know, bringing more affordable housing here. And uh, that's appreciated. Okay. Anybody else? Mayor, Councilmember Rouse and Councilmember Moss still have their hands raised. So, Councilmember Moss, if you'll start uh, in just three seconds, go ahead and begin your comments. I was referring to the property, not the school system sold, but the property down on the left where the one bedroom apartments were like 800 bucks a month. I'm sure Andy online or Mr. Tahan. And that's what I was asking. Uh, is and I and I do think if we are truly and if that's a commitment being made, and I realize that that's only a usually twenty or some percentage of the problem, but if we are in fact stating for a fact and not just as an intent, but as a fact that in fact there is substantial affordable housing being constructed, that would influence my vote versus just building a traditional place that's. We got a lot of high end apartments around the city and we're giving them up. But if we are truly 20, what percentage? I, I would like to really know that from, because they do make great places and they are pretty. And I think they, they have to make them pay. So they got to do what they got to do to collect their rents. But are we talking about that is with those credits? I usually there's some percentage for at least a 10 or 15 year period of affordable housing. So is that what's being? Uh, the intent of this project. I hate to keep belaboring the point, Mr. Mayor, but I, I really would like to know that there's more than just an intent that there actually is a a commitment that that's what we're going to do. And I, won't, I don't have any other questions, but I would like to, to hear from Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Mr. Franklin, do you have a comment? Uh, am I unmuted, ma'am? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, we are committed to build affordable housing on this development. We the rents will be between, and this is going to be an estimate, so don't hold me to the exact dollar, but it'll be between eight hundred and eleven fifty from one, twos, and threes. The entire community will be a blended of forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty percent of the of the, the median income. Thank you. Councilmember Moss, do you have any additional comments? I just want to thank Mr. Franklin for the detailed information. I appreciate that very much and I will be supporting the project. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? No, Mayor. Okay. We have a motion in the second and a concluded discussion. Please call the roll. Yes. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Uh -huh. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Uh -huh. And Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the application. Okay, thank you all. Uh, next is there's any unfinished business? Council member Moss, do you have any additional comments? No, I do not. Okay. That's the only virtual hand that was raised mayor. Okay. Then under new uh, business, I'd like to, um, bring forward and congratulate. We know we just recently had an election. And uh, Ms. Abbott, Mr. Bellucci, Ms. Wilson, and uh, Ms. Wooten were uh, reelected. Would any one of you like to make any type of comment? And once again, congratulations. Uh, 
Okay, Mr. Wood, would you like to make a comment? And congratulations on your uh, re-election to vice mayor. Is there any comment you would like to make? No, sir, Mr. Mayor, I just appreciate the um, the opportunity to serve again and uh, look forward to working with everyone. Uh, I think that um, you know we have we have some challenges uh, ahead of us, and I um, I think that that what unites us is uh, is our, our desire to serve the community. And I think we'll, we'll navigate these things together. And I thank you all. Sorry, Mayor, I have uh, Council, Council Member Wooten and Council Member Tower. Council Member Wooten, I'll call on you first. Could you please pause two to three seconds and then begin your comments? Yes, I uh, would not like an opportunity to go by without thanking the voters for the opportunity to serve a second term um, on the city of Virginia Beach uh, City Council. And I'm very blessed uh, to have had their support and to be the first African American to serve that second term. I uh, could not have done that without the support of the entire community. So I thank you for your support and I'd also like to say congratulations to Vice Mayor Wood on his selection by council for another term. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wooten. Councilmember Tower, if you'll pause just two to three seconds to begin your comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanna take the opportunity uh, first to congratulate you and all of the other members of council who were recently reelected. Um, now that I've been through that, I know what a difficult and challenging process it is to go through the election process. And uh, I want to say how much I appreciate all of your hard work and everything you've done. And then I wanna join Ms. Wooten and, and all of the council members in my sincere thanks to uh, Mr. Wood. Uh, I think he's done a marvelous job as the vice mayor, and I really look forward to serving with his, uh, with him on a continuing basis, and uh, having the benefit of his leadership as well as that of your, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. And thank you. And if I could just say in closing, uh, you know. We as a council over the last two years have been through multitude of challenges, recounts and uh, appointments of council members, high of something in the water, low with our tragedy, you know, personnel changes, things of this nature, COVID and, uh, you know, civil unrest and dealing with it. But I'll tell you what, we have a very unique and eclectic council. And this is the opportunity, what I've seen is that we have galvanized and come through. We are proud of the fact that Virginia Beach for some time now is rated one of the best cities to live in, one of the best managed cities, safest cities, excellent school. We live in a place where people pay big bucks to come and visit where we live. But going through, you know, we've been through tough times and now I think we deserve better times. And I really think in many, many ways, us hanging together as a council and working with a magnificent staff have come through COVID perhaps better than a lot of other places. And for that, we are indeed blessed. But may say this go forward, you know, through any adversity, we have the opportunity to work together and collectively, you know, to continue the great strides a great city has met, but we will never lose sight that we are a city of heroes, and we are also, the strength of our city are the people of Virginia Beach, and I honestly believe that our council believes this in our hearts and souls, and nothing but good, and once again, thank you all. What an honor it is to work with anybody. At this point, we will uh, adjourn the meeting, and we will go into op uh, open mic night. Thank you. <laughs>